Hi, my name's Cy Horden and I'm a sales engineer for Farrow UK. I'd like to run through the product specifications for our new scene to go app version 1. The concept of the scene to go app is to make it easier to share read-only scan projects with partners and customers. The program consists of an app and a viewer. The viewer is standalone and no longer based on a Chromium portable browser. The app is installed in Scene in a normal way and can be used to transfer the viewer and scan projects to any media you choose. That media can either be on a Windows or a Macintosh device. And you can also transfer to a folder or copy that folder to a tablet or burn onto a DVD. Within the app itself we can create the scene to go data, we can transfer that data and we can also manage the projects. The key thing here is if you've put in document links all those links can be directly copied as you create or transfer the to-go data. You can either view the projects on a USB device where no installation or browser is needed and it will work with the Macintosh and Windows operating systems. It requires a minimum of Scene 7.1 a full or a trial license to work and as you can see we're running on most Windows based systems and most Macintosh based systems from Windows 7 and above or Mac OS 10.9 but we advise that you only work on versions of Windows that are above 32-bit. So I've transferred across to Faro Scene 7.1 and here you can see we've got a fairly small project with just five scans. If I view the project, it's of a road traffic collision where we can see we've got two cars that have collided. Now the first thing here, before we even go near the Scene to Go app, is to create our document links. If you've never done this in Scene before, it's a case of going to the annotation clicking on the icon, clicking the location of the annotation and then going off and finding the hyperlink to the document of choice. In this particular one we've got a series of photographs, measurements and we've also got a video. Once those document links have been created you can go in and edit any one of them at any time by right clicking and clicking on the properties tab where you can change the location or you can go in and change the name of that particular link. So to generate our scene to go bundle what we do is go to the app section and we go and download and install the app as we would do with any other scene app. Underneath here we can create, transfer or manage the projects or we can open the manual for further information. If I go to create then you'll notice here the dialog box looks the same as our WebShare Cloud dialog box where we can set up our overview map settings to look as a standard view, a clear view, a cap filler or a scene overview map. We can also designate what background colour we have. If we want to, we can create scan overlays, which is quite good to see how far the scanner has been projected or the data has been picked up when doing the scan. We can create a single layer map or we can apply clipping boxes and multi-layer maps, as well as export layout plans, so if we want CAD plans as our floor levels. We can choose what resolutions we require and whether to do colour and grayscale images. And of course, we go into the project settings where we set up our unique name, identifier, image and description including our longitude and latitude if we so require. And then when we're ready, we click export. Once that's been created, what we need to do next is go to the scene to go app, click on the down arrow and transfer the project to our specified location. As mentioned, this could be on a USB key. We could copy it locally and transfer it to a DVD or we can put it on our hard drive. If I click transfer, the key one here is I've got a series of document links. So I no longer have to create a documents folder and transfer that data manually. It will copy all those links for us. Here I specify my location and I simply click transfer data and it will now go and transfer that project to that location on my hard drive and it will tell me when it's done and how it's worked. So here you can see it's telling me how much hard drive space I've got. I've copied four attachments and the size of those attachments is 32 meg. Because we're using an app now, I can open it directly within scene. If I inadvertently click OK to that, I could go and locate it on my hard drive, or if I go back to scene and go to manage projects to go, it tells me what projects are. If we've got multiple projects that we want in the same file, we simply keep putting them to the same location. Or I can click here and say open in scene to go. So this fires up its own app. So again, similar kind of environment to what we're used to. If we want to, we can turn on our overview map or our scan location and simply toggle between the two. But as you can see here, we've got our crash site. In here, we've got our document links where we can click on them and either open the link or go and show the properties. So if we open the link, 
So this opens up a separate picture in a standard Windows viewer or Macintosh viewer and shows us the skid marks from a standard photograph. If we close that down, so here you can see we've got a video link. So if I open that up, it's using standard Windows Media Player on my particular computer and we can watch the video link linked to that location. Or if we go back, we've then got some more details in here. We have a look at those. Where again, we've got another photograph for somebody taking a measurement on the side of the dent on the car. Or we've actually got some predefined measurements that will go in and open a PDF to show us the physical measurements of the dent after the impact. So we'll close that down. If I just go back to my overview map for a second, one of the cool new features we've got is when taking distance measurements, if I just take a couple of measurements along here and then come along to here and then click OK, I've got my standard measurements, so I've got my lengths, but if I click on these and go to expand the axes and the angles, we're now getting the angle between two measurement lines. If at all we want to delete that, then if we go to the delete option, simply click on the measurement and click OK. So once you've transferred the data to the media of your choice, you send it to the recipient. If they're on a Macintosh platform, they double click on this command prompt here. And if they're on a Windows based platform, they double click on the .bat file to start the scene to go application. So here to summarize, we're using a standalone app. So there's no reference to the cloud. That app requires no installation of any software. So it can be viewed on any form of device that can either be a Macintosh or a Windows based application. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming tutorials.